Group 5 out with interim results and headline earnings per share up 4.9%. That stock closing at just over 35 rand, up almost 5% today or 4.7% higher. What do you make of Group 5 in the context of the entire construction story that is unfolding? We've seen the, the bigger players under pressure given the, the fact that they're seeing a fall off in, in revenue generation beyond 2010. It was actually quite surprising to me, Bronwyn, and um, it was encouraging to see uh, that HEPs up 4.9%. And, uh, you know, in the bigger picture of, thing of things, looking at uh, the construction sector, it's been so depressed. And you look at the likes of Marion Roberts, Avenge, Wilson Bailey Homes, they've all come, come off some serious highs. So to see a stock respond very well like it did uh, up 4.7%, I think, and, um, um, you know, it was well received by the market. Also reading into the statement a little bit this afternoon, it was quite encouraging to see um, what they see uh, for prospects looking forward. Of course, it's a bad environment that they've come out of. And, uh, you know, if the cycle does start to turn and we start to work off this low base, things should start looking up for these stocks. And all the bad news should be priced in these stocks at the moment. So at some point, you've got to say, where do you, when do you buy these stocks? And well, exactly. And construction stocks, we know, lag an economic recovery. Correct. So certainly, you've got to start looking for, for value. Uh, would you say the time is now? The question is, where do you see earnings going forward? So at the moment, all the bad news, as I said, is priced into the stocks. I don't see some serious outperformance looking forward, but I do see some potential valuation in there looking forward. So I would be buying some of these stocks. But some. So you say some, which means you're going to be stock picking in this environment. Yes. You've got to look at your, your more sort of uh, blue chip type stocks. Um, Murray and Roberts, I kind of like. I think Avenge is uh, also up there for me. Um, I like the steel exposure in Avenge if you know, commodity prices and steel prices start to push forward. Uh, I'm very bullish on a story like that. And I also think there is a bit of value in Wilson Bailey Homes. So, you know, you stick to your blue chip stocks and you just start nibbling away and building a small position in a portfolio. Marianne Roberts recently saying that they're having trouble with revenue recognition in, in the government space. Do you think that that will soon work its way through, through the system? Well, I hope so. And, you know, government has not been one to pay on time or not been one to sign a check very quickly. So, you know, it's, uh, it's good that that news again is in the share price. And if that does filter through and that does attribute to, to bottom line earnings, then you're going to see the, the share price start to tick up from current levels. So where looks where good. else are you looking for value in, in the current market, given the fact that valuations across the board are, are pretty much on an even keel and it's quite difficult to, to find value when uh, share prices are at these levels? If you look at it from an overview and you say, well, what, if, what have been really the outperformers of late? You look into it and you say, well, the retailers are extremely full in their price at current levels. Banks have really, they're all releasing and released their results recently. And a lot of people are sitting and investors are waiting for the dividends to come through in that. And also shot up quite high. So at some point, there is going to be a cyclical switch that takes place personally that I think where you might see a bit of chips coming off the table in the likes of your retailers and your banks and start moving into uh, the likes of some of your key resource stocks. Um, Not your platinums, though, because they are looking expensive uh, to, to everybody's book. Well, I personally don't think so. I think there is some value to be had in your platinums. Uh, at the moment, prices are full. Yes, I agree. But, you know, you've got to look at your push and pull factors within the sector. And so we're sitting on a very strong rand. If that does start to move out and commodity prices can hold their levels, then there's still some value to be had. And personally, I'm actually a buyer of Impala Platinum down at, at 190 Rand. But aren't you placing a lot of emphasis then on the fact that the Rand needs to weaken for, for your story to come to fruition? Yeah, there is that case. But again, you know, you look forward and you say, well, where, is, uh, where are valuations going to come through? Where is the demand going to come through? And you look at the bigger global picture. And demand is going to persist from the China side of things. I think platinum prices and commodity prices are starting to normalize. They might be a little bit high at this, at this stage in time. But any weakness at this stage, I'm personally seeing a buying opportunity. You know, not so long ago, uh, Anglo-American was up at 350 Rand a share. And uh, I remember sitting two months ago and we said, well, do we buy it at 315 Did Rand Did you buy share? it at 350 I Rand I said, share. let's hold back and wait for it to dip under 300. And, and Anglo-American today, what are we seeing on that front? Uh, if we can get that stock up, because there are valuations. Uh, I know Ashraf Mohammed from Regiments Fund Managers feels that this one's going to 450 Rand. Yeah, that might be a little bit bullish, but I'm, I'm personally very bullish on the stock. Obviously, it's due to timing and how long he sees that stock taking to get to those levels. But, you know, I think you've got to be participating in the weakness that you're seeing in a couple of your key resources. 
What about the pharmaceutical environment? Aspen came out with results yesterday, now, notwithstanding the fact that this was the best performing top 40 stock of 2009, gaining 117% over that period and really outperforming the, the top 40. Uh, but it also rallied some 14% up to the, the release of its results. Is there further upside in Aspen? Would it be a mistake to bet against it? It would be a mistake to bet against it. I think it was a positive set of results and uh, the market knew that. You saw that rally on the lead up to the results. And um, I think looking forward, they've got some good uh, prospects. And uh, you know, a stock like that in an in uncertain environment is gonna have defensive qualities. If the market does normalize, you most likely won't see our performance, but you'll see it tick up slowly and uh, look, look good going forward. But I wouldn't be selling it at this stage. If I've been in from lower levels, I'll probably be readjusting my portfolio and turning some into cash, but still keeping some exposure there. Is volatility coming down? It is. On the international front and locally? It is coming down a bit. It is actually coming down quite a bit over the last uh, week and a bit it's come down. But, uh, you know, we've had such a strong rally and, you know, volatility tends to tick up when you see small corrections in the market. So, you know, your corrections happen a lot quicker than, you know, your steady uptick and your, your trending market. But, you know, we've had a strong week. It's so difficult. I must be honest, it's been a very, very tough trading environment the last two months. And Do you think it's going to get better from, from here? I personally think that it's going to move into some sort of a sideways action where, again, you're going to see these valuations digest themselves at current levels. And we're going to wait for the next set of earnings results to come out out of all the listed companies. And that's going to be a catalyst to really drive this market beyond 30,000. But at this stage, I believe that you're going to see some sort of a, a sideways pattern in a sideways trading environment for, for some time, two, two months or so.